What's going on, guys? Brian Jack with Some Man's Comics, and we're here to kick your comic book week off with nothing better than that top 10 back issues to be on the lookout for, right? Absolutely. Um, we've got some exciting ones and a great mix of publishers. This week, we've got Marvel, we've got DC, we've got Image, we've got Boom, we've got IDW. Everybody is present and accounted for some great books on the list this week. Yeah, the thing about this one is there's a lot more recent modern books yes. that are back issues, but still great to be on the lookout for. We're getting into it right now, starting with number 10. Coming in at that 10 spot, we got a two for four. Yeah, that's right. We are talking about that Miles Morales Spider-Man issues number five and six. Yeah, and we just did a special Champions Edition that really broke down um, 10 great opportunities to buy uh, Champions first appearances. And there was a couple that we left off, but they were some of the biggest ones. And that was kind of done intentionally. Um, and we wanted to kind of highlight books that we felt like were still kind of flying under the radar. But a lot of people commented about it. So we want to make sure that we highlight these books for anyone who's not aware. So Miles Morales, five and six, because we don't play comics politics, cameo, first full, doesn't matter, um, is the first appearance of Tiana Toomes or Starling, who is a major character who drew a lot of attention from people who are really reading and following this series. She is also a legacy character, being that she is the granddaughter of Adrian Toomes, better known as the Vulture, who is, of course, a classic Spider-Man villain. So there's a lot of speculation about um, the fact that could uh, Zedadaya in, um, in Spider-Man, could that possibly be her? Um, you know, of course, that's she's the daughter of Vulture there. Um, they'd have to take some liberties with that. But she kind of has that starting kind of has that look um, in comics. But um, that that's one of those things uh, that's just pure speculation. But either way, there's a lot of interest in the character. And these are two issues to definitely be on the lookout for. If you find them in back issue bins, if you find them at cover price, these are easy, easy grabs. And number nine, we're sticking with Marvel again. And we're sticking kind of with that in the MCU. But we got that Sam Wilson, Captain America, issues number three and five. Yeah, and here we are getting Joaquin Torres, uh, the new Falcon. Um, and again, not playing into that comics politics. Uh, he does also kind of appear in issue one, but it's a dark side-esque cameo. So we'll stick to three and five. Um, really, three is the first appearance. That is what all of the, the databases have kind of pointed to. I think that's the one that people will mostly pay attention to for the first appearance. Five, he's featured on the cover in costume. It's a great cover. It says, meet the new Falcon. Um, I definitely think that will be kind of the iconic one, especially like if they ever use this character in film. I think that's the book you will see um, used in like announcement articles and things like that. So I would pay attention to five. And since everybody loves these like late printings that are really kind of low printed and rare, even these simple color change ones, five has a very simple color change second print that is uh, near ghost. Coming in at the eight spot, we're moving over to image for a second. We get the ice cream man, number eight, but we talk about cover bees all the time on this channel. And this one is a fantastic one. Yeah, and see, now there's no doubt that this is already like a $50, $60 book, and it's a tough to find book. But this is a book I actually think has legs. Now, first off, we've talked on three up, three down about Ice Cream Man is really kind of coming in into its own. Um, and I'm not going to say like it's the next Walking Dead, but it's hitting the, the realm. Next DC. It, it, well, it's hitting the realm of like um, independent series that kind of doesn't matter. Like it doesn't really matter that it, whether it's a TV show, people love that series. And the anthology really plays well for it. Um, on top of it, we've worked on an exclusive variant. The editorial staff, very easy to work with, very accepting. Um, that's why they've come up with so many cool things uniquely on their own. So their variants are some of the coolest and unique ones on the block. They've also gotten a lot of great um, artists from all over the industry to do artwork for their cover bees. Um, a lot of cover bees that have come out are an absolute ghost. But why is this one in specific the one that we are pointing to? Well, regardless of how much this goes for, I think there's meat on the bone. And the reason I think that so is because they have a new spinoff series from Ice Cream Man coming out, um, I believe in what, January, uh, called Ha Ha. And Ha Ha is a anthology series, just like Ice Cream Man, from the creators of Ice Cream Man, based around clowns. And the clown depicted on the cover is eerily similar to the clown on the, this cover um, from Ice Cream Man number eight. Now, 
I don't have any sort of confirmation that it's the same clown or anything like that, but I've got enough experience in the comic market to know that you're kind of one alert away from drawing that uh, conclusion and the entire market will jump on board. Um, and either way, this kind of the success of this book, I have to feel like is sort of one of those things that probably motivated uh, where we are today, where we're giving us a clown spinoff. I'm, a, I'm very bullish on Ha Ha. I think that that's going to be a successful series. The name is very weird to say out loud. I'm going to have to get used to that. But um, with the success of Ice Cream Man and uh, kind of the, we've talked about it for over a year now, Horror is Hot. Um, and then the, the cover art success that they've had. This is one that I'm very bullish on. Then coming at number seven on the list, we get something very recent. We get that Robert Kirkman goodness, and we're talking about that firepower number one, that prelude or free comic book day. We know there's a bunch of those free comic book day issues out there, but it's still a great one to pick up. Yeah, so this is one that has a lot of potential. People are loving this series the more that it kind of goes on. Um, there was some maybe some skepticism early on, um, but it was one of them. Yeah, but it just it, it the longer it's gone, the more people have liked it. I think wow. we even had it on the three down like two weeks after issue re one release. Well, and part of the reason is kind of the confusion with the release. Robert Kirkman had this unique and creative way to do it. He was going to drop the book first on free comic book day. Um, then he was going to drop a tr prelude trade paperback and then he was going to drop issue number one. Um, but COVID messed everything up. So number one came out, then the, the, the trade paperback and the, in the free comic book day simultaneous. So that's why I put all three on the list because I really don't know what you want to call the first appearance. Um, I've seen all three entities looked at as a first appearance. Um, I would say that all three have value um, and all three are affordable right now. And there's a gold version for firepower. Number one, the, the like one per store, um, which certainly if you want to be like a discerning buyer, maybe that's the one you kind of focus on. Uh, but this, this is something that we've seen that where kind of one, once the big studios go in one direction, other studios follow, right? Well, we know that Marvel's going with these like kind of Kung Fu type stories. Um, coming up with shang -Chi. we know that so once they do that i expect to see some kind of copycat stuff i i really think we could see this on amazon um and certainly there's other people in the community that have started that buzz so skybound is a a, a monster it, it, there's it's it kind of a, it's got a uh, a little bit of a a kind of upper echelon uh feel to it um with even within the image brand um, and then this being a Kirkman property, and we know that he wants to kind of develop things and we're already moving on with the Invincible, um, you know, animated. We've certainly seen The Walking Dead. I don't even need to speak on that. So uh, it, this is one, but you get on this now while it's cheap. You know, let's don't wait for this to later on for it to blow up. Uh, this is a great time for it. Coming at number six on the list, we're getting over to Boom Studios with another licensed property. We're talking about a recent issue as well with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 55, which is that last issue in that series. Yeah, so, you know, this has always been a thing where Tommy Oliver, he's the Green Ranger, but he's also the White Ranger, and the, you know, the Gold Ranger, and he's, he's kind of filled multiple roles. And, you know, within the comic series, they're getting ready to kick off, as you mentioned, you know, two new series, Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers number one. Big, big, big Boom Studios releases from Ryan Parrott. Um, the final issue in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and I know that can be confusing, um, but all, issue number 55 featured the debut of a brand new and really powerful Green Ranger. Um, and But this, this character is a mystery. This is making huge news within the Power Ranger community. Um, first off, the mystery, the whodunit of who is this character. Um, the, the mystery surrounding, you know, the, the, the fact that this guy is very powerful. Um, and, and, you know, some people believe Lord Draken. Um, there's other people that have, have, uh, their chips bet on Matthew Cook, the, uh, the former boyfriend of Kimberly, who, uh, uh, first appears in Go Go Power Rangers number one was created within the Boom Studios brand. Um, you know, but what, no matter who you kind of like are betting on, 
I like the attention that's being put on this. And we know from Boom Studios, they've put out there that like that's going to be the central storyline of the first arc of the new series, uh, leading to a major, major reveal whenever it's finally revealed who uh, this Green Ranger is. So this issue is, uh, is a sleeper. Boom's got the new character right on the cover of cover A, as well as a number of excellent retailer exclusives, including uh, one that we did as well with our uh, friends at 616comics.com. Uh, um, you can get that still at that, the 616comics.com, as well as simplemanscomics.com, uh, coming from superstar cover artist Jung Young Yoon. But um, whether you buy ours or anybody else's, uh, or just really look for cover A, um, this is one to pay attention to. It's one that's drying up, and Ranger fans are already looking at it as a major key. Then here we have it, that five spot Green Lanterns, number 42 and 43. We got that variant set. That's right, because last week we talked to you guys about Green Lanterns 40 and 41, that Brandon Peterson uh, two cover set, but it's it really extends to four covers. Those two were kind of the first two that kind of kicked it off and got everyone got excited about. Um, but there's two more kind of in this kind of faded look uh, uh, set. And we are seeing already interest of everything that we put out last week, I would say those were the two that people jumped on the most and really got on board with saying like, yeah, I like that. I, I definitely think so. Um, and, and we've talked about this. Like, there's good, there, We've speculated for probably two years now, you and I, Brian, that DC cover bees are going to see, see their day um, because DC properties are going to get popular in movies. And I think people forget that for like the last two years, there's been no DC movie spec. I mean, like literally none. Um, so because of that, and, and, and very little television spec, um, because of that, there hasn't been that variant spec that we're getting in Marvel. Think about how many Marvel variants are blowing up. And you can sit here and say, well, yeah, but they're high ratios. Um, true, but when you don't have that as an option, you only have those cover bees. And when those cover bees are, are low printed, and especially once you start getting into like the 40s of the series, um, you, you can start to see that. So these are not like crazy easy to come by and they're already taking off. And we already saw um, 41 show up on the uh, uh, another um, another entities uh, top list. Um, so I expect to see more interest in this this set and in these Jessica Cruz and Simon Baz variants going forward. Right, and then sticking with like the whole Jessica Cruz, we got Justice League mm. Odyssey number 10. We got that Lucio Prio variant, right? Yes, and this one is already starting to move with no one talking about it. So that's what gets me really excited about this book. Um, this is a great kind of character defining uh, shot. This, And this is what I love about DC cover piece. This is what you and I have been bullish about for a long time is what the hell is the difference between this? this cover and any exclusive that anybody could ever possibly put out right i mean this this thing is as as gorgeous it was a 2.99 book but this is already probably about a ten dollar book i believe that these things are out there for cover price though justice league odyssey this is a series that you and i love we've been trying to tell people reader <laughs> we've talked about these issues in this this series quite a bit I can't. I cannot say enough how much i like justice league odyssey i really think people especially if you're a fan of justice Cruz. Right, right. And I like all, I mean, the dark side story I and mean, a cool villain, the Jessica Cruz stuff was awesome. Um, it, it, it's kind of like a mix of Justice League, a little Teen Titans. It's a really good book. Um, and and uh, this variant coming from Lucio Perillo, it just, it, it really has a big feel to it. I could see this one being a lot more expensive than it is right now, $10 and drying up. So I really believe you can find this one, too, in your back issue bins. So just be on the lookout for this one. Hitting us at that number third spot. We're staying with Justice League Odyssey, but we're going issues with fifth. But we're going with issues number 15 and 21. We got the variants for those as well. That's right, because we are talking dark side now. I mentioned briefly dark side, but there's a lot of reasons to be bullish about dark side. First off, you've got the, the Snyder cut. Um, which is essentially now going from a recut movie, which you and I were kind of like, why is this a big deal? Um, to now almost a whole new movie yeah. leading, leading into a sequel now, they're saying. So with that and the fact that we know that the New Gods movie is on the way and that the New Gods movie will have Dark Side be very prevalent in, you got to start looking at Dark Side variants the same way we've talked 
talked about, say, you know, uh, Galactus from the Marvel Universe. Um, and, and when you start looking at dark side variants, there's a few ratios that get people's attention. And those have kind of already popped. Um, Especially that Bermejo. Yes. And now I'm starting to look at some of these more modern ones um, that we've seen, like that deceased uh, Matina. And then these right here, two Justice League Odyssey variants that really fit into kind of what we're talking about, where either of these, they could be exclusives. I could see stores selling these for $15 and, and, and you know, kind of having that value. 15 is from the same set as that uh, number 10 that we just talked about. This is a Perio kind of uh, uh, almost like a character spotlight variant uh, and obviously Lucio Perillo is a very popular cover artist it's an amazing cover in 21 you get Scan, who again very popular cover artist um, type of artist who uh, is very prevalent on high ratio as well as as retailer exclusive variants uh, these are two great dark side variants not crazy crazy uh, available because again Justice League Odyssey was a slept on series so don't sleep on this one. Be on the lookout for these. I definitely think you can find these in your back issue bins. Don't go overpaying for them, but I can easily see these being $25, $30 books going forward. Coming in at number two, this is the back issue. Just got moved off the new release rack, and we are talking about The Last Ronin number one. Yes, and it's like, well, why are we talking about this? Because I, I we are long-term oriented. And being that, it's like, yeah, it's great the flip you can make on this book right now. I, I, I get it. Um, but even Silver Age, uh, Golden Age dealers, I'm seeing pickup posts with this book. Um, I, I, this is, is we, we've, you and I have compared it to The Killing Joke. Um, I think that's kind of where its lineage will lie. This is going to be a very important book. It may be um, Dark Knight Rises kind of thing. Um, it, it, is, it is always going to be, I think, one of the seminal, most important releases in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle history. We're certainly very bullish on where the turtles are going to go in the future. They've lasted multiple generations, which is the type of staying power that kind of proves longevity. Um, and then there's so much for this story to go that, this thing could get hotter. Yeah, it could fizzle out, but I doubt it. I mean, this is a 30-year story from two great storytellers who literally have crafted our entire childhoods into adulthood. So um, I'm very, very bullish on this one. You can kind of take your pick, whether we're talking cover A, whether we're talking incentives, or whether we're talking retailer exclusives. I kind of don't care. I like them all. Um, I'm also bullish on that second print that's coming out. I think it's going to be overprinted, but I, either way, I think this is going to be a classic, classic, classic release. Um, no matter the cover or the cover art, this is going to be one you're going to want to have in your collection. Um, and I think it's going to be one we're going to see on convention show walls for years to come. Then that's at the top spot. Coming at number one this week, we just talked about this on 3 Up, 3 Down. We we're talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 95. But the second print. Yes, that was my little spoiler Easter egg, but this is one of my favorite books. Um, this is a book primed for an explosion. It's starting to go up. We're starting to see it hit about that $10 to $15 level. Um, having said that, it is still sitting readily available at Midtown Comics for cover price. Um, and they had it on like, a, when they did that 35% off flash sale the other day, they had it on there. And uh, you could put the maximum 25 copies in your cart. So they've got copies. Um, but so this was a, a heavily ordered issue. Um, so there was kind of some negative to it, but look at how everyone expected to see Jenica prices drop. They have not dropped. They have stayed steady. If anything increased on the first print, as well as the cover B, uh, look at where Jenica is in the story. Um, so we're on the second volume of a solo series. No other characters sitting there getting that. We're sitting here with her as kind of like one of the main stories kind of going through the ongoing ever since her introduction uh, we hear nothing but positive buzz about her her introduction into future media like movies um, and television as well as uh, toys and other things like that so this is a character that long haul you need to be really bullish on so if you start looking at it long haul and you don't think about kind of the current climate and current pricing um, you you got to look at this book and go, well, it has everything you can want. It is a key first appearance, an unquestioned first appearance. At the same point, we see what second prints are doing, right? And then here, 
you have a very unique second print in that the first print, you know, you get that reveal at the end, the first print and whether it's cover A or B have really nothing to do with the major event that everybody wants. But the second print cover by cover artist Ben Bishop, who's very synonymous with Ninja Turtles and Kevin Eastman personally, um, he does an amazing, amazing uh, cover, which shows Jenica as a turtle. So that has kind of like all of the necessary uh, ingredients to kind of be a recipe for a monster late printing. On top of that, this is kind of listed as a Ben Bishop, Kevin Eastman cover because it's considered a wraparound cover. There's a separate back cover with that kind of original blue scale drawing style of Kevin Eastman, which features that panel uh, where we see Jenica kind of awaken as a turtle in, the, in that old school homage to that like blue scale on the back. So if you get that slab, it looks incredible with that Eastman on the back and Ben Bishop on the front. I've even seen cool double signatures where people get Bishop the sign on one side and Eastman the sign on the other. But either way, this book I think is a winner long term and it can only sit available for so long. So, you know, this is what I'm looking at two, three, four years down the way when Jenica starts hitting those TV shows, when she's in the cartoons, when she, her action figures are in stores and children are starting to buy her up. That's when you're going to go back and look at this and this is going to be a hundred to $150 book. And I honestly believe that. With that being said, there's 10 more back issues for you to be on the lookout for. This is Brian Jack of Men's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Nowadays, nothing really is ice cream. Only one of me and nobody's like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's ice. I got wifey on, bling and she ice. Freeze, freeze, photo, photo, please, please. no photos. No, no. Jeez.